Hey there, it's Benjamin. In this video, I'm going to discuss five things you must know as a home buyer. Let's get started. Rule number one, know your contingencies and know your timelines. As a buyer, you must know which contingencies in the sales contract protect you as the buyer in a real estate transaction. Contingencies are put in place to protect you and your earnest money deposit in a real estate transaction. Prior to submitting an offer on a property, discuss with your real estate agent which contingencies are included in the offer and what is necessary to meet all timelines. Be thorough in your questions with your real estate agent and make sure you have a clear understanding of what to expect moving forward. As a buyer, begin to familiarize yourself with the contingencies that are put in place to protect you and your money. It would be wise to discuss what power you have as a buyer in a real estate transaction during the initial meeting with your real estate agent. Once you have identified the home you want to make an offer on, your real estate agent will write up the offer for your review and signature with contingencies included. Your earnest money deposit is an initial deposit of anywhere between 1% and 3% of the agreed upon purchase price of the property and acts as a good faith deposit. Once your offer is accepted, you as the buyer will typically have three business days to deliver your earnest money deposit to the escrow holder. This earnest money deposit can later be applied towards the total down payment of the home. The contingencies in the purchase contract help protect your earnest money deposit and allow you as the buyer to get your earnest money deposit back should you decide to back out of the deal, assuming all contingency timelines were followed correctly. The home inspection contingency. Have the property inspected by a professional home inspector. Your agent should schedule this as soon as possible upon the opening of escrow. A home inspection is put in place to identify any issues with the home that need to be addressed or fixed prior to moving forward with the deal. Some examples of what's inspected include the roof, interior plumbing, the HVAC system, electrical systems, structural components, appliances, insulation and ventilation, and others. If something comes back on the home inspection report, that needs to be fixed, you as the buyer can use the home inspection to ask the seller to fix the needed repairs. Or if something significant is reported on the home inspection report that is a cause for concern to you as the buyer, you may be able to back out of the deal and find another property while keeping your earnest money deposit so long as all timelines were met. Typically, home inspection contingency periods are for 17 days after acceptance of an offer. The appraisal contingency. An appraisal will be required if you are purchasing your home with a loan. Lenders need an appraisal performed because they are not going to lend more money than is necessary, especially with the home serving as collateral. If a borrower defaults on their mortgage and the home goes into foreclosure, the lender will sell the home to recoup the money that was lent. If the home was purchased above fair market value or sells for too high of a price, the lender may not be able to recoup their money if the borrower defaults. If the home appraises for more than the agreed upon price, you as the buyer are in a good position. This means that the appraiser values your home higher than the agreed upon purchase price. If the home appraises for less than the agreed upon sale price, the lender will not approve your loan. The lender is concerned about the ratio of the loan to the appraised value of the home. The buyer and seller will then have to come to a mutually agreed upon solution if they wish to hold the deal together. If you are paying for a property all cash for your home, an appraisal contingency is not a requirement, but you may want to include an appraisal for peace of mind to ensure that you are not overpaying for the property. Loan Contingency Having a loan contingency included in your offer allows for you, the buyer, time to secure financing for the home. Typically, a buyer will have 21 days after acceptance of their offer to obtain financing. If something goes wrong during the loan approval process within that 21-day period, the loan contingency ensures that you as the buyer will be freed from any obligation to purchase the home. As a buyer, in addition to the aforementioned contingencies, you may also want to have a termite inspection completed, a mold inspection, radon gas, and other inspections. The termite inspection may be a requirement from the lender depending on what type of financing you are obtaining. Discuss with your real estate agent what you want to have evaluated by a certified specialist. 
Lastly, ask your agent to verify title records on the property to make sure that the title to the home is clear and marketable as well. Rule number two every home buyer must know is get pre-approved with a lender before you start to view properties. Having a pre-approval letter from a lender not only shows sellers that you are serious and a qualified buyer, it allows you as the potential buyer to know exactly what home price you and your agent should be looking at. It is vital that you as a buyer have an understanding of your different down payment options and what your monthly payments will be. It is important to be specific with your lender about which subdivisions you will be looking at when viewing properties. The tax rate for a specific area can vary along with your monthly HOA payments and the ability to obtain insurance and the costs associated with the insurance need to be accounted for and will impact the purchase price you as the buyer should be looking at. Number three, ask yourself, how long do I plan on living at this property? How long you plan on living at the property will have an impact on not only what property you ultimately purchase, but also the overall cost of ownership. If you only think you'll live at a property for a few years as a primary residence, it may not make sense to buy. Conversely, if you buy a property under market value and fix it up, you can have equity accumulated rather quickly. If you only plan to live at a property for say five to seven years, it does not make much sense to buy down your interest rate or pay more in upfront fees to the lender in return for a lower interest rate. If you only live at a property for say six years and it will take nine years to recoup the upfront fees to the lender for a lower rate, it doesn't make much sense to pay for them. Interest rate is a significant factor in your overall cost of borrowing but so is the amount of time you own the home. Do the math on how much just a half a percent increase in interest rate will cost you per month, cost you per year, and cost you for the life of the loan. The longer you live at the property, the more important the interest rate is. These costs incurred from higher interest rates can be more than waiting for a decrease in home prices in the marketplace. At the time of this video, interest rates are at historic lows. This lessens the total cost of borrowing for you, the home buyer. Rule number four every home buyer must know, stop trying to time the market perfectly. The value of a home, especially when interest rates are low, is what should be heavily considered, along with your intention for the property. If you are currently renting and contemplating whether or not to purchase, ask yourself, how much have I spent on rent in the last 12 months, the last 24 months, throughout my life? Could those funds have been better spent on a property that will appreciate in value? With a variety of mortgage products available in today's market, you may be able to qualify for financing with as little as 3.5% down payment. I'm not asking you as a buyer to make a flippant decision without weighing all of the facts, but based on my experience, people that are constantly on the fence and never make a decision are the same people that usually end up regretting not taking action. Time in the market outweighs timing the market perfectly, especially on a house that you can afford and would like to live in and one that has future value in the form of both increased equity and appreciation. The real estate market today and the mortgage industry as a whole are markedly different than was seen in the mid 2000s. Since the Great Recession, unprecedented fiscal, monetary, and regulatory policies have been enacted to stop toxic mortgage lending and excessive borrowing by consumers. Leading up to the Great Recession, loose lending guidelines created an environment for borrowers who otherwise might not have qualified for financing to obtain generous home loans. Borrowers were able to obtain NINJA loans, an acronym standing for no income, no job, and no asset loans. Some lenders did very little to verify an applicant's ability to repay. Some of these loans offered attractive, low initial interest rates that would increase over time. When the interest rates on these loans increased, borrowers that shouldn't have been able to qualify for financing began to default on their property, causing a sea of foreclosures, resulting in a decline in housing prices. Today, Ninja loans and other subprime mortgages made by unscrupulous lenders are prohibited. The Dodd-Frank Act enacted in 2010 provided for the ability to establish consumer protections against predatory lending. The act also made it easier for consumers to understand the terms of a mortgage 
before agreeing to them and provided mandatory disclosures for borrowers seeking financing. The act also deterred mortgage brokers from earning higher commissions for closing loans with higher fees and or higher interest rates. It also requires that mortgage originators not steer potential borrowers to the loan that will result in the highest payment for the originator. Today, there are healthier mortgage books and owners have more equity in their homes now than they did prior to the downturn, equating to steadier housing prices. Number five, know what is most important to you in your new home. Is location most important to you? Interior square footage. Is it the school district? Proximity to work or other family members? There will likely be trade-offs that you will have to analyze when considering which home is right for you. I challenge all potential buyers to create a list of the five most important things in your new home. Knowing what's important to you before you start looking at properties will allow you to narrow your search parameters for homes that are within your budget. You and your agent should discuss what's most important to you during your initial buyer consultation and after you have been pre-approved by a lender. A lot goes into purchasing a home. It is important to gain as much knowledge as possible and rely on the knowledge of qualified professionals, including your real estate agent, when discussing all of your options. I hope this video was helpful and educational. There's a lot of information that I did not cover in this video related to purchasing a property. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below or you can reach out to me directly and I'll be happy to assist you. My contact information can be found in the about section on my YouTube channel. Until next time, I'm Benjamin.